Well, it looks like uh, spring and summer have finally come to uh, the D.C. area. Got a nice day out here. Really wasn't planning on making another video quite so soon, but I've been uh, writing a series on setting up your own server, not using any of the pre-built or pre-programmed configurations. And I just finished doing one on setting up a uh, RAID 5 array using the command line and then I was getting ready to write one on doing a RAID 5 array via a web GUI via cockpit and looking at the number of pictures I was going to take I said you know what I might as well just record another video so here you are the subject of this video is going to be creating a RAID 5 array using cockpit on a Devon server. I'll be running Devon 12. It's still in testing. It should probably be released in a couple months, but we'll see. Okay, I'm running VirtualBox 7.0 on this machine here. And the first thing I want to do for our virtual machine is create three additional storage drives that will turn into that RAID 5 array. To do this, I want to select my virtual machine, and then I want to select the settings icon for that virtual machine. And from there, I want to go to the storage, and in storage, I want to go to the uh, SATA controller. And on the right side of the SATA controller should be a disk icon with a plus on it. I want to select this, and this should open up the hard, the hard disk selector window. Next, we're going to click the Create icon in this window, and this will bring up the wizard that will allow us to create additional hard drives or virtual hard drives. And we're going to run through this wizard three times, accepting the default each time. The next step is to add all these just created hard drives to our virtual machine. They may be in the same folder, but they're not attached yet. To do this, we go back to the same page using the same disk plus icon. We select a drive, and this time we select choose. We need to do this for each of the extra drives to make sure they're attached to our machine. and You'll be able to see it in the main interface once you go back. Okay, now it's time to spin up a virtual machine. This will take a few seconds to get it up and running. Once it is, you'll notice that this Devon server has an additional line in the uh, startup display showing us the uh, way to log into Cockpit if we want to use Cockpit, which we're going to use here. Since we're going to be using Cockpit for this exercise, let's uh, reduce our server window and then let's uh, switch over to our browser and we'll enter the IP address and port number that we got from that line and it should take us to the uh, Cockpit interface. Once we've closed the uh, information window at the top of the screen, we can move over to usage and then metrics. And here we can see we just have one disk defined in our current virtual machine. 
From here we can flip over to the storage page and we can see again that we have one disk defined, but we can also see over on the right that we have three additional disks set up and are attached to this machine, but they're not in use at the moment. Now let's flip over to the terminal window for a minute. We can review what we just discussed in the terminal. First, I'm going to use the apt command with the list and installed and using grep to filter to check, make sure I get a few programs installed. First one we're going to look at here is cockpit, and we can see all the cockpit modules that are installed as well. Next, I'll check that sudo is also installed. And of course, SSH. You can review the previous posts in this series to get a feel for what we installed and have it installed on these various implementations of the Devon server. Additionally, as per our last uh, post in this series, we want to make sure that MD Admin is also installed, as this is what lets us make RAID devices in Debian. Going back to the storage page, we want to go up to devices in the upper right hand corner and click on the three horizontal bar icon. This will open up the RAID window and allow us to create our actual RAID device. From here, we can create our RAID device. We can give it a name, we can select our RAID level, our chunk size, and then any of the unused drives that are available to be used in this RAID. In our case, we gave it a name RAID 0, real original on my part, uh, RAID 5, 512k chunks, and we selected all three of our remaining unused drives. Then we hit Create to continue. Note that it will take a little bit of time for these drives to be erased, reformatted, and set up as the RAID device. You, you can monitor the progress under Jobs on the storage page. I'm going to jump ahead a little bit since there's not a lot to see at this point. At this point, our RAID device has been created, but it has no partitions, no file system, and it is not attached anywhere, so we basically can't use it. We need to go up to the devices under devices. We'll see our RAID device listed. Click there. This will open a new window for our RAID storage device, which has some basic information. And then down on the bottom under content, you have buttons to allow you to create your partition table and to format the drive. So we're going to go ahead and do that, and we'll format the drive as ext4. Partitioning the drive is fairly straightforward. You just do it. When we get to creating an actual partition, we'll have several options available to us. We can give it a name. We set the file type, which we said the XT4 already. We can pick how much of the drive we want to use. Uh, we can set our mount point, and we want to mount it now. And we're not going to encrypt it in this case, so we'll just create the partition. And this will take a minute to finish up. At this point, you can see that the RAID has been set up, it has been mounted, it is available for use. And when we go back to our storage tab, we can now see the RAID devices reflected along with our main boot device. And if you really want at this point, you can jump back to the terminal interface and run a few commands like uh, dfcd, list whatever and verify that things are actually working correctly this is not a requirement just for your information
Going back to our overview tab, you can also see that the RAID device is now reflected under the under the disk box. And this is about it. We've created the RAID device. It's available for use, and we're ready to move on.